for a first-hand account of TDK's series win. Thank you, Riv. I'm joined by Kez and Alex each after a 3-1 victory, slightly shorter series than the previous one today. So first of all, congratulations. Kez, I'm coming to you. You're back in the LCS. Mm -hmm. You've made it. I just want to know how it feels, this journey through the Challenger scene and arriving back to the big stage. It feels great. It's actually my third, third time relegation, and it's actually so happy that I can actually win a relegation match. Now, did this series, there's obviously a lot of planning and preparation that goes into uh, approaching a best of five series. Did this play out the way you expected or did things catch you off guard this time around? No, not at all. Like, it didn't play out as we thought. Like, we didn't really do, like, much thinking before this game. Like, we would just, like, do, like, whatever we wanted and then whatever we felt like. Just, like, like impromptu. Yeah. So, with that in mind, Alex, it became very clear in this series that Siver and Ziggs were going to be uh, pretty contentious picks after the first couple games. Uh, as he, as Kez just mentioned, that wasn't necessarily expected coming in. How did you guys kind of sort out what the big priority picks were going to be in this series? <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my voice a bit, but overall, like, when we approached this series, we didn't know anything about Winter Fox. They don't know, like, much about us. So we're like, okay, let's play first game of best of five to see, like, the power picks and stuff, and then just decide on that. And we saw the fusion games, so we got an idea of like Alistar and stuff. Like first game, I think it just snowballed out of control. And like starting from second game, we started to understand like what are the priority picks and what is like, you could see like them picking first, picking Seer, and they're like wrecking on us. And like we understood that we can do the same pretty much about Zeke's and everything. So we knew like we like further in series, we started to know what kind of comps we want and if they go like for depending on what comps they are going for, we can counter it. So like, uh, we knew there are three first, possible first picks in the last game. It's Sejuani, uh, Zix, or Alistar. And we're like, the best for us was Zix. So and after he picked it, we just knew what to pick after it. Well, so uh, now I'll, I'm going to go, I'm going to continue on that line because after picking Ziggs, you pick up Cog. And th in this series, you played Corky, Urgot, Ziggs, and Kogma. So four champions coming in for you. Um, and having been a sub for this team, there, I'm going to assume that there wasn't as much practice as one would normally have wa had wanted, especially between a jungler and a mid laner, right? Where generally there's a fair amount of synergy to be had. When you're pulling out four different champions in limited practice time, what was that dynamic like working with the you know with the two of you, but with little time and so many champions? You know, right now the meta is so strange. It's like everyone is picking tank jungler, and it favored us a lot because they can't do much like pressure or anything, and we're just getting a lot of wards around the mid lane, so we can free farm. So if I get counter pick, Kogmo is scaling better than Zeke, so we just like he's farming, I'm farming, and I'm getting better. And overall, I like to pick different champ every game. It looks so cool. Well, this tank meta is how or has developed and is pretty established now. Kez, you've always been known as a hardcore vision jungler. Yeah. Uh, probably most notably known for your Elise play. Elise is no longer in the meta, but you've picked up Sejuani and Gragas. How do you feel you've adapted to this tank meta? And do you feel that it does play into your favor? Yeah, I kind of quite, I quite like this meta right now. Like, everyone plays safe right now, so it, it becomes kind of like like farm fest, but it means like the better team that can control the vision better wins the game. And do you feel, do you feel that the entire team has uh, the, the vision capabilities that can compete at the top of the LCS tables? Uh, or is that something that you guys still need to? We still need to improve a lot, like every, on everything, like mechanics, like word vision control, like everything. All right, now Alex, having been, um, a sub for the team throughout throughout the uh, the split or the season of uh, for this challenger series. What was it like being asked to come in here for this final week, play in the best of five series that's going to decide the fate of this team? So you know, easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> it's just like and just another day. I don't know. It's just like I uh, like Smoothie a lot and Kes. Like it's fun to play with them, and then like. Even though Lewis is like troll and solo queue and everyone hates him, I guess, but he's trying to like improve and he's a really good guy like out of the game, I guess, out of solo queue. I think it's maybe some kind of like current mentality that needs to change overall. But I think that whenever like they adapt more for like American like lifestyle, play style, because I think that it comes a lot from like coming to the foreign country where you don't understand anything. It's like really hard to adapt for those players. 
And when they like adapt to it, it will be much better and much easier for them. On the topic of Louis GG, he had an interesting item build today on two of his 80 carries. Yes. In the first game on Sever, the Essence Reaver, too much success, actually. Mm -hmm. Second game, though, on Lucian, not as much. And then he kind of moved away from that build. Was this something that the team was prepared for? Or is he, did he just kind of pull that out because, it, you know, he felt like it? Personally, I never liked it. Like, I hate seeing that item on, the, on my 80 carry. But I think, I don't know the reason why, but since, like, the last week, he started, like, buying the item mm -hmm. on every 80, 80 carry champion he plays. Like, and I don't know. He says it's good. Right. Like, I don't know. Well, we, we, I, it seemed like Freak was able to rationalize it on the desk <laughs> here for, for the Sivir pick, being yeah. that you get cooldown uh, and the same amount of AD as a Bloodthirster, and crit is less important for her when she's going with ricochets that, and, and boomerangs. Mm. So there was some justification there. The Lucian, maybe not so much. Anyway, uh, you know, finally, back to you, Kez, with the future of this team. How... I mean, I, what do you, what do you, what are the prospects for this team moving into summer split? Where do you guys expect to finish? What do you, where do you want to finish? And what do you expect to do in order to secure that, uh, that goal? Um, I wouldn't say I want to. I don't want to like aim high at the beginning. Like I want to go like slow, slow and steady. And then I would like actually aim for like like the mid tier. So yeah. So are you looking when you say mid tier? Is that Qualifying for playoffs is that seventh, so that you just avoid yeah. this this relegation. Yeah. So seven or higher. I mean, uh, higher is of, of course like better. Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> I mean, one would be fabulous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it was another fantastic series, close nonetheless, with a ton of impressive plays on both sides. But the player who broke away from the pack was Seraph. Seraph was a constant threat in team fights, and his Nidalee in game four opened up the map and kept Winter Fox off balance, allowing the Kogma to power up there and and to the point that you guys could end up rolling through the team. I want to get your thoughts on Seraph Kez as, it, for him too, this was a lot about redemption, getting back into the LCS. What has having him on this team been like, and and what's his mentality and motivation here uh, playing to get back into the LCS? Mm, he actually likes to like try a lot of champions like that he likes, like especially the Nidalee pick in the fourth game. Like It was just like, like nobody like planned about it. Like He just like, what, everyone was like, what about Nidalee against Cho'Gath? And he was like, all right, I'll just play Nidalee. <laughs> and then it just turned out to be okay, I guess. Now, yeah, it, it worked very well once he got to that Triforce and the, and, the, and the Bork power spike. Alex, playing with somebody like Seraph, who at the moment most top laners are playing strictly tanks, Mo, you know, build a lot of armor, be giant meat shields. He has this AD Nidalee that he throws in there that no other top laner is really willing to pull out right now. So what does that do for the team having that really unique split pushing threat that can open up the map the way it does? Well, it was really good in these circumstances because like all their peak is about grouping. And you like know they're, they are gonna group. They're just like, if they need it, they can get to the point where she just like 1v1s Chargath and gets the turret. And it's just like good for us. So we're like, okay, let's try. Even though like early started not that well for us, but we like slow down, like we can still win, we scale good, so we slow down the game and it went out well. Because like we just found the moment when Seraph can like 1v1 and we can team fight because I got my items and Luis got his items. We're just it was a just slow game, but it went out well for us. Yeah, it worked out very well, showcasing some patience <laughs> there, which is good to see. Anyway, gentlemen, I want to congratulate you again on the victory there. Congratulations on qualifying Thank you. for the LCS, the only challenger team to actually make it up there through the promotion tournament. Let's take a look at the teams that will be making up the 2015 North American LCS. Team Dignitas and TDK have successfully won their spot in the upcoming summer split, along with newcomer Enemy Esports. They won first place in the challenger series in an automatic spot. They will face off against the returning squads like Team Solo Mid, Gravity, and Cloud9. That means that uh, Team Fusion and Winter Fox will join Coast and Final Five in the Challenger Series. But you don't have to wait until summer split for any more league action. Starting May 7th, the best teams from around the world will be meeting in Tallahassee, Florida to fight for regional pride. Tickets are still available, so head to lolesports.com and you can learn how to cheer the pros on in person. Now, I'd like to once again congratulate Team Dignitas and TDK on their victories today, and we look forward to seeing them in the summer split. Now I have to extend an a special thank you to both of our guest analysts, Expecial and Zion Spartan, for sharing their insights in today's games. That does it for us here. So for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and good night.